is that guys currently sunday i'm about to go get duncan which is fun and exciting we love duncan i haven't had it in like probably a week i'm thinking a breakfast sandwich and a coffee today mm -hmm. let's delve into how this has come about in my screen time right it's it's a little alarming it's a little it's a little high it might be like seven hours a day It might. I said, you know what book I never finished? What book I've had for months and never finished? Miss Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte. I got this book because I wanted to read Jane Eyre and also because I think the cover is nice. I read two page 144. And then I just kind of stopped <laughs> because nothing was happening. To catch you up to speed about where I think I left off in this book, um you have jane her name's jane right jane lives with her uncle's her uncle's family and they're mean they like mistreat and abuse her and then this guy comes and they take her away to a boarding school at the boarding school everyone gets sickness and then kids start to die it's like really cold and they're like freezing what happens after that but then she grows up, I think she becomes a teacher or she she sends off a letter in the mail, become a tutor for this girl. I think her name's like Adele. Adele? Adele. A little French girl that she's tutoring. Maybe she's teaching her English. I don't, I don't actually know. Um, and that's where I left off. But low-key, I thought this was like, it was a romance. Oh, and also a kid she's tutoring who lives at the house of this man that I think is... You know what? I don't really know. It says it's a love story of Jane Airplane, yet spirited governess, and her employer, the arrogant breeding Mr. Rochester. Um, so yeah. It's supposed to be a romance, and I know this is a little book, but it has the text that's like really like Bible text, you know? I figured since my screen time's high, I do want to finish reading this book so I can give like a genuine opinion on it. I'm going to spend some time this week and maybe the next week because it's midterm week trying to finish this book, see what my genuine thoughts are because I also have Wuthering Heights, which I bought. Oh my goodness. No. Yeah, I bought last summer. It I it's not as long ago as I thought. I feel like I've had it for years, but I got it last summer and I never read it. But the Bronte sisters, I've heard that their writing is pretty different from each other, but a lot of people say Jane Eyre is better. So I don't know. I'll see how it goes and I'll update throughout the weeks. Peace. So not that anyone cares, but I ordered a new SD card so I could take videos and pics on it. I'm so excited. It's supposed to come today. Jane Eyre update. So it was really interesting because when I picked up the book and started reading from when I left off all those months ago, it was 
where the plot started to pick up. So I I gave up on it. Not a good time, but at least I'm like getting back into it. Actually trying to make myself finish it this time. It's surprisingly really funny. It's so funny that I stopped reading at that particular point where the very next chapter was like pretty exciting I'd say. I think I'm starting to find older books to be more amusing. I don't know if that's just because I'm getting older and more lame but like I was reading Wolf Knight and Macbeth for my Shakespeare class and why was I giggling? Why well, was I having a Grendel time? They're funny. Okay, so I felt like the air needed to be cleared here because right now it's giving very pick me. I read Shakespeare. I'm so cool. But genuinely, the whole time I was reading Twelfth Night, I was just thinking about She's the Man because She's the Man is such an accurate depiction of Twelfth Night, genuinely down to the name Sebastian and Viola. Like, I was just in awe that it was so similar and I was not expecting that at all. One complaint right now though is that yes, Jane Eyre is a classic, but why is this man 20 years older than Jane? Like that's a little sus and she's 18. Can we talk about that? Why was that so normal? Okay, let's actually not talk about it. I don't want to think about it, but it's a little bit weird. We're not gonna... It's a little bit weird. It's my update of class early in the morning and I have a ton of stuff to do tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be my kind of chill day even though I have a ton of classes it's like a kind of chill day but tomorrow will not be chill because I have a lot to do. Hopefully it's a good day. I'm gonna try to go to sleep now. Peace. Hey girl, hey! I have a midterm today in like two hours. So I'm making a matcha latte. <laughs> you may be wondering why. Well, I read a little Jane Eyre. I read a little Jane Eyre today and I thought I'd share my thoughts and like where I am right now. So right now I'm at the point, hold up. Oh, I also made mac and cheese. This is my lunch, don't judge me. <laughs> So in the book, I am at the point where Mr. whatever his name is has like brought a ton of people back to the his house <laughs> and they're all just chilling there and then he like makes Jane meet everyone and then she tries escaping and then he finds her trying to escape and it's like what are like what's wrong and she's just like um I don't know. <laughs> so that's where I am in the book right now. So basically it's really starting to pick up, which is surprising because because it's Jane Eyre, I guess. I'm enjoying it so far. At first, it was really repetitive and boring, and I kind of feel like it might get a little repetitive and maybe boring as time goes on and we stay in this environment with these new people and Jane and whatever else is going on, but hopefully it kind of just keeps advancing i'm in like the middle of the book right now or maybe a little bit past the midway point and since chapter 13 ish it's been fine the pacing hasn't been as bad as it was there's 50 pages that made me stop reading the book for pretty much a month Nice angle. Truly, what a good angle. Mm. 
the first book I got is a journal. Now, this is a moleskin journal. If you don't know, I'm a big fan of a moleskin journal. It's really makes journaling feel like a more, a more serious thing, a thing you should actually do. And also, I just like keeping track of my thoughts, my day to day, making sure that I don't lose my experiences and the confines of my brain. Because as we know, brains can be really messy, convoluted, unexplored place. And if you don't take the time to really think about the things you've done and the things in the past that your mind can't really seem to let go of, it's free there. What can I say? This one's a little silly goofy, but I got Dante's Inferno. <laughs> and you may be like, that's a little weird. Why are you reading Inferno? Well, I'm writing a novel that has pieces of, I don't know, I guess some elements of what I would consider Dante's Inferno in it. And I think reading the source material would be really beneficial to figuring out what in the world I'm trying to do. Because right now I really don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to piece things together. And I think the world building is kind of lacking a little bit. And by reading this, I think it could really help me figure out more of a definitive direction of where I'm trying to go with this novel. The last thing I got was Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins read. After I do, I've been wanting to read this book for a long time now. And I mostly got it because I think it's going to be similar to like Sarah Hogle's You Deserve Each Other with one of my favorite rom-coms. I don't really think this book's going to be a rom-com because it's Taylor Jenkins read. I think it's going to maybe be more of a tragic, serious reflection of like a marriage and what went wrong, but I don't really know. I just have heard it recommended by a few people and it sounds interesting, so I got it. So those are all the things I got there. Other than that, I went thrifting a couple days ago and I'll put like a picture of whatever I ended up getting, but I got quite a few things I really like. So I can't wait to wear those once I get back to uni and I'll be feeling very preppy and cool, especially with the warmer weather. I'm looking forward to warmer weather because, well, I guess it doesn't really matter because you can wear tights, but I'm just excited to see what life has in store. Um, books on the other hand, <laughs> I'm supposed to be reading Jane Eyre, right? I've gotten probably a little bit more than halfway through Jane Eyre, but I went to the library and I actually picked up Diana Wynne Jones, Jones's Howl's Moving Castle. And so far, I'm really enjoying that, which is interesting because it's like in the juvenile section, it's considered a kid's book. But I think there's so many times when kids books are actually more entertaining than adult books. I don't really know why that is. I feel like with adult books, lots of times people don't want to take the risk to try to make their book seem a little more fantastical and stray more from the known path. I find that with children's books, they tend a lot to just throw random stuff in there and it's like a curveball. You never know what's going to come. Like especially, I don't know, I guess a lot of them follow a pattern, but it feels a lot less prevalent. Like you can stray from that pattern a lot more with kids books than adult books. I guess because adults are less willing to accept strange things. Like you see a new kind of advent of movies and media that kind of is just straying away from a known path. Like what's what's that movie called? Everything, everywhere, all at once. I might be saying the title of that wrong, but I know that movie really threw me for a loop. When I started watching it, I was like, this is kind of like nothing I've ever watched before. Also like Parasite was kind of unique. Um, <laughs> What are some other things that I've seen recently that isn't like a kid's movie? I don't know. I would have to think of more that don't follow a set formula Um, that I really enjoyed or thought was very inv- I Honestly, I started watching the Elvis movie. The way that was set up, it was really cool Um, with all the like transitions. I've never really seen that in a movie before. So I think people are starting to realize that some things are tired and right. Maybe could use some, some changing up a bit. I don't know. But it's really interesting to see new ways artists and creators kind of try to defy or recreate set standard molds that have been, I don't know, created in the past. Those are just my thoughts. That's really all I have to say right now. Um, went to the beach today. That was fun. Um, pop up of BDK. Another year. Another year. I don't know what I was going to say, but anyway. TTYL. So did I sit here and film a sum up clip, a summary of... Maybe what I liked and disliked about the book? No, I didn't. But that's what I'm here to do while we watch these really cool pictures and come to a consensus on what I thought about this book. So towards the end, I started getting a little scared, a little worried, you know, like things were happening that I didn't know how to feel. 
like I genuinely when she met her long lost cousins or whatever I was so confused and it was just like one eighth of the book that seemed so integral to the plot and I was honestly perplexed confused I was very thrown off by St. John I did not like St. John (laughs) um but anyway yeah those are my thoughts about him as a character very strange man truly um overall I think I'd give this book like three point two stars it's not a reread but i did really like some of the prose i thought was very poetic some of the plot very very strange a little delulu one might even say but i had a fun time with the parts that weren't very confusing (laughs) so take that as you will 3.2 stars that's all i have to say about the book goodbye